What is God's will for me? What is God's will? What is it? Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we're going to be redeeming some something. Coming up next. Good morning. Good morning. Coffee. This is our sponsor. Just coffee. That's all it is. No particular coffee, just any coffee. No, I drink particular coffee. Anyway, uh, I am Richard. My name is Richard, and I'm a husband and father of three girls and a boy. I'm a pastor of a church here in Kentucky, and <clears throat> I love movies. I love story. I love art. I love artistic license, creativity. Uh, I did some videos on The Chosen, if you want to check those out. Um, and... I think that's well done, The Chosen. I think this movie, Redeeming Love, is well done, at least from what I can tell. Now, disclaimer, I've not read the book or seen the movie. I have watched the trailer, though. Uh, shout out to my friend uh, Jordan Friesen, a good friend of mine. We went to seminary together in Louisville. It's a good time. Now, he's a pastor as well. And he had some concerns he had shared with me. He said, hey, you should check this out. I hadn't heard too much about it. Elisa Childers, who's on YouTube, she's been around a long time, uh, and Ali Beth Stuckey both talked about it on their podcast. It appeals to women, uh, especially the, to quote Ali Beth, trashy novel <laughs> from the 90s. Now, she admitted to reading it, but it wasn't, it was helpful in one sense to her. Uh, she's more a little more sympathetic, and I, I might be too, but I've not read it. But we have to remember that men are very visual, right? Men love the visual. We love the skin. We just do. This is how God designed us. Women, on the other hand, are much more emotional. More visual, more emotional. One's not better than the other. Don't hear that. It's just like the sun is brighter than the moon. Doesn't mean one is less equal or something. We both need them. God made them. We both need them. Just like men and women, we need each other. Um, God made marriage in such a way that it's difficult, especially in a fallen world, but God is still good and he is still faithful. Redeeming Love is a, a new movie, came out a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm not going to see it. I've not, like I said, read the book. My wife's not going to see it. <sighs> Definitely my children wouldn't see it. Their oldest is 11. So why am I talking about this? Well, the book <clears throat> is about Hosea, the story of Hosea. Uh, who kind of sounds like a female, at least that's always all I always thought. Hosea was the girl, and Gomer was the guy. Well, it's actually the other way around. Hosea is actually the guy, and Gomer's the girl uh, in the b biblical account. Of course, not like Gomer Pyle. It's such an ugly name, but, you know, again, it's the Old Testament. We're talking 2,500 years ago, 2,600 years ago or so. <clears throat> so Gomer used to be a pretty name, apparently. Not an Andy Griffith, Mayberry Town, but... <laughs> It was in the Old Testament. So the author takes that story and basically makes a biblical accounting and writes a uh, Christian love story. Now, this is what she does. She said this uh, for quite some time, and that's just, just what she does. Francine Rivers is the author. Uh, she doesn't have much to do with the movie, I don't believe, but she wrote the book. Now, the book, again, is similar to like a Fifty Shades of Grey, appeals to females, right? But then they make it a movie, and then, hey, the lady knows about it, and she can drag her husband or her boyfriend along with her. <clears throat> That's why we're talking about it today. Not only because of the emotional pornography that is indeed in it, and you can even tell with the very... <clears throat> excuse me. The very um, sensual posters of redeeming love but the graphic nature of the large amounts of nudity that's apparently in the film now before you get too crazy and think oh, you're just a fundamentalist you're you're i mean shut up you know you're a, a pharisee you're a legalist first of all no name calling is not going to be allowed okay you might think that but that's stupid don't think that 
Okay. And if you have that same opinion and somebody else calls you that, you call out that nonsense because it's not stupid to guard your heart, to guard your eyes. Your eyes, especially for men, are like 70, 80% of what we receive, right? Now, ears, all the five senses, but visually, we are so visually stimulated, even females, but men even more so than women. But women certainly are as well. We're just a little more one dimensional, <laughs> guys are. Ladies are more complex. Oftentimes. But this movie, you know, the guy's named Hosea and he redeems her. Now, the book of Hosea is all about... <clears throat> coffee dries me out. Sorry, I'm not sick or anything. Um, the book in the Old Testament is about God and his covenant relationship with Israel. His chosen people. His royal priesthood, right? To be a light to the nations. To live in such a way in covenant communion with the Creator. That was the whole point of Israel. That's the broad brush scope of Israel. Not because they were good. Not because they were great. Not because they were all saved. Not because they all had faith in the Messiah. None of that. Rather, because of God. That's why. Now, similarly, he calls everyone everywhere to repent, as we see in the verse parts of Mark. But most people don't. But it doesn't mean Jesus' blood could not wash them clean and give them new life. The problem is there has to be that faith involved, that contingent on submitting to the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. So Hosea is written in the Old Testament. This book is kind of like that in the sense of redemption, of course, redeeming love. But the, the book, and especially the movie, supposedly goes with sex, prostitution, this little girl, she's bought up into slavery, and this and that and the other. Horrible, heinous, bad. Not saying we shouldn't talk about those. And we, we, certainly, we certainly should talk about those things. Those are bad things. Those are things that happened. This is Gold Rush, 1850s, uh, California, or at least the West. I don't know if it's California proper, but it probably is. This story is about this two couple, these couple, this couple though, okay? Not a covenant relationship with God. Because in the book, the Old Testament, and I encourage you to go read it. I'm not going to read it here just for sake of time. But the book in the Old Testament is about God's relationship. And I want you, you're going to represent me, uh, um, uh, Hosea, and Gomer's going to represent Israel, right? That's what's happening. And she's going to whore after other lovers. That's the whole thing. And that's the language it uses. We don't need to shy away from that language. We're in a such overly sexualized culture, like hyper-sexualized. So we hear horror or horror after, and we're like, ah, oh, that's so offensive. And yet we're willing to see Victoria's Secret ads all over the place and movies like this and, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey or whatever. And things that are, are either softcore pornographic or just hardcore pornographic. Forget the fact that, you know, the statistics of, I think it's like a third or 25% of websites, all websites everywhere in the whole internet are pornographic. And yet we all have this secret thing or at least a lot of us do, and I struggled with this for years. Praise God, I don't anymore. But with this little privatized immorality that goes on in our phone and in our computers and so on. But we all don't talk about it. It's kind of like other things. That's another video. For this one, redeeming love is a gateway, in my estimation. Not just because of the soft core emotional pornography, but also the physical visual pornography. Now, the movie's only rated PG-13, but this is why ratings are garbage most of the time. I mean, The Passion of the Christ, for goodness sake, was rated R. There's no pornographic things at all. There's no anything. Now, it's just bloody, but it's reality. I mean, it could have been rated G for crying out loud based on historicity. Now, they, Gibson took some liberties, but I think it's more faithful than even a lot of The Chosen. But again, go watch my videos on The Chosen. Redeeming love here is just about this couple and doesn't really have anything to do. Again, I haven't seen the movie, but from the reviews I've read, the other things, the blog posts and so on, has very little to do with the Bible story and everything to do with just, well, this woman was a, a harlot. She grew up in it. She's a victim, blah, blah, blah. And she grew up and she meets this guy and it's great. He brings her out and then she goes back and he brings her out and she goes back. So there is some similarities. I'm not going to deny that. But... Gomer is not a victim from the scripture. Israel is not a victim, okay? You are not a victim in your rebellion against the creator. Neither am I. We are, we are 
proud kings and queens of our own domain and standing on our own foundation, which is, you know, sand. And we say, I'm in charge. I'm going to do with me. That's with all the sexual madness going on. Whatever the phobia or whatever, not the phobia, but they call us phobia. Whatever the alphabet, whatever the letters. It's all about me and me and me and me and me. What I think is best. I get to decide who I am, who I'm attracted to, what I am, my own gender and everything else. It's all about self-expression, quote unquote. Okay, so don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You get down to the base root of it, which doesn't take very long usually. And it's all about self-expression. So, this is very similar to that. She's a victim, poor girl. Yes, we can talk about that. And we should talk about that. And I think a lot of Christians have shied away from that, <clears throat> similar to uh, baby murder, because we don't know what to do. How do we handle this? Well, I mean, you could get involved with the ministry. You can always pray, right? That's massively important. We always discount that, like, well, I guess I'll just pray. Well, no, no, no. You're engaging the creator of the universe. He wants to have a relation, and he can hear you, and he will act. That's not this last-ditch effort. That's number one. That's the first thing. But we can engage. We can challenge people in their worldview. We can do even things like this. You can challenge. You can even ask somebody, hey, why are you watching that? Why are you doing this? Why are you? Whatever. You can support pregnancy clinics. You can support. Uh, there's a, a wonderful organization, Scarlet Hope, in Louisville that deals with sex trafficking and especially, uh, um, well, I'll just, strippers. There's another word to say it. Um <laughs> dancers. I don't know. That's like the fancier word. Strippers, right? And pulling women out of that, doing Bible studies and trying to get women saved out of that lifestyle. It's a very great ministry. They've got some bakeries and other things uh, and restaurants and so on. Scarlet Hope in Louisville. Great. And there's plenty of other organizations like that um, around. You just have to look. You have to be willing. So we can talk about sex trafficking and prostitution and sex slavery and all that other stuff. Okay. But we don't need it here in the sense of showing the skin. And it's not just innuendo, supposedly. It's it's full on lots of things. One review of this movie said, I cannot believe this movie is rated PG-13 and suggested here for 14-year-olds. I'm a grown woman and could hardly sit through it without being almost traumatized. The description above downplays the violence. This is from, and I'll put this link in the description, there's a whole lot more of the activity than just the brothel. They literally show little girls in bed, and they show men buying them, holding them by the jaw, and dunking them underwater. They also show children being made to watch someone being murdered. There is a very graphic suicide scene. Incest was between a father and daughter. There's also an abortion scene. Multiple scenes where women are abused, bruised on faces, punched, and everything else. Uh... I had no idea this movie was so violent as it was. I couldn't even sleep last night after watching it. There were very minimal. There is very minimal love or romance, really, mainly at the end. Okay, if you're an adult who doesn't mind that type of graphic imaging, well, you should. <laughs> but okay, I could see why you might want to see it because it does have a positive ending. But the majority of the groups, including adults, especially if they have trauma, would be extremely triggered and stressed by the events in this film. The acting was fabulous, and it, it does look really great, right? The acting does look really great. The production looks really great. Usually Christian films are junk. I don't like them. They're kitschy and campy. They're terrible. They're just, ugh, they're so bad. This doesn't look like that. But we'll get to why. what I think, if it were up to me, what I would change based on some of these reviews. After watching this, I would also never read the book. Also, I cannot believe, once again, it's rated PG-13. Another person in their title said, would you watch this movie with Jesus? <laughs> no, probably not, right? Probably not. What I would change, and what you can do, especially if there's only graphic scenes at the end, which I doubt she might have, I don't know, overplayed that or underplayed, I don't know. But you could easily have them coming together, especially if they're married, and then the door shut. And we all know what's going to go on. We don't need to see bare breasts. We don't need to see a, a naked back or a butt or whatever else is going on because it's probably a lot. We don't need to hear the moaning and the screaming and everything else. We don't need to hear any of that. We all know what's going on, especially if you're north of puberty, especially if you've, you know, been married and, you know, uh, gone all the way. <laughs> uh, had sex, we'll just say that. 
we don't need to see it, right? And they could easily do it tastefully without having this. Now, the violence, again, that's violence. But here's the difference. John Piper said this a while back when he was talking about movies. That the explosions, the blood, the this, the violence, all that stuff is fake. Okay, that's stuff in movies. It's fake. Now, sometimes it's based uh, Band of Brothers, right? Or Saving Private Ryan or Passion of the Christ uh, or even in this movie. Um, but it's fake. Nobody was really harmed. Nobody was really hurt. There have been some movies, though. In some movies, they actually do have sex. But a lot of movies, they don't, but they're pretending. But you're still seeing naked bodies. Those are still real naked bodies, was his point. These are fake explosions, either CG or just, you know, fire explosion. Nobody gets hurt. It's just, you know, whatever. Particles blowing up, boxes, whatever. Gun violence, whatever. Even curse words. I don't mind as much. Some people struggle with that, right? And some women see a naked body and they don't have a trouble with that. Men do. Why? Because we've been... From age 7, 8, 5, 10 years old, usually, even in the 90s. I was a kid in the 90s, before we even had these stupid things. Still, I was catechized by pornography. Am I a victim? No, I'm not a victim. Okay? But I had years of that. She's talking about trauma and violence and this and that. Do they need to show that? No. But they could uh, uh, imply it. They could show it. They could talk about it off the cuff, they could show it blurred out in the back. It doesn't need to be full on in your face, but that's what they're doing, right? And this is all to say, this is pushed on Christians. That's why I'm talking about it. Now, Hollywood's going to do what they're going to do, but I'm talking about this because this is a Christian movie. No, it's not. It should be easily rated R. It's rated PG-13. That's totally a misnomer, totally misleading. Bad, bad, bad. It's redeeming lust. That's what it's doing, just like my little thumbnail, <laughs> right? It's not helpful at all. So I would change it. I would remove all the skin. You know, you have the door shut. Maybe you hear a sound. Oh, I want you. Whatever. You can, I don't say, listen, if these are husband and wife and they're showing what husband and wives are to do, God made sex, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not be weird. God created it. And it's good between a man and a wife in covenant marriage. Okay? Right? We're on the same page. But these people aren't married, number one. Number two, yes, they're acting. Oh, it's just a story. Okay, fine. But then you don't have to you don't have to show this though. You can imply and everything else. I've already said that. Some words from God. Maybe you're thinking, yeah, but I don't know, dude. It's, just, it's not a big deal. It's just not a big deal. My husband doesn't struggle with that. Well, ask him. Ask him. My brother doesn't struggle with it. If you're comfortable with that, ask him. If you've not had conversations with your 13-year-old son, you probably should. Probably should. And your husband should. His father. Ephesians 5. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed because of these improper are improper for God's holy people. God's holy people. Holy. Holy means set apart there. Okay? Set apart. Holy. 1 Peter 2. You must abstain from the passions which wage war against your soul. They wage war, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be a fool. Don't go into this battle and think, ah, it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to put my sh my, sh my sword down, my shield, my belt, my armor, my helmet. It's fine. There's no en enemy walking around roaring like a, a lion trying to deceive me, trying to eat me. 1 Corinthians 6.18, flee sexual immorality. Every other sin a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Now, this is talking about men. Why? Because men are more visual. I've already said this. But it doesn't mean women are not somewhat responsible, somewhat trying to help their men as well. Men bear the, bear the weight. I understand that. But ladies, especially if you, you, know, you bring, remember back to your BC days. I'm talking to Christian ladies. Maybe there's unbelieving ladies. You wear a shirt, you know what you're doing. You wear the skirt too short or too long, the shorts, right? You want men to look, right? I mean, it's it's evident. R women are not here on Sports Illustrated and Victoria's Secret and everything else. They're not there against their will. It is willing, okay? Now, this girl, it's a little different, right? She got stuck in, she was victimized and this and this, and that's heinous, that's bad. And there should be movies about this, right? So I'm not saying that. What I am saying particularly is, you know, you can lay off the violence and you can lay off the skin. You don't need to do it. You can hint at it. You can you can get at it. We're all sinners, right? We're all broken. 
And true beauty ultimately comes from God's redeeming love for wretches like us. Okay, The gospel comes for Christ's people, those who put their faith in the Lord Jesus, not themselves, but rather him. Ultimately, the forgiveness comes in Christ. Now, if you've already seen this movie, again, I'm not trying to castigate you, but I want you to at least, I'm pushing against you, think about what you're doing. Maybe you've seen things like Fifty Shades of Grey. I've never seen that either. Again, it's even worse. And that's not a Christian movie, quote unquote, but it still comes under the auspice of like, oh, this is just, you know, this is just helpful. It's a, you know, it's a movie for girls, ladies, oh, whatever. Know what you're watching. Know what you're putting in to your eyes that goes down into your soul. Remember Romans, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's not about being good. It's not about, you know, destroying your TV or never seeing movies or, you know, being legalistic. That's all I'm saying. I watch movies. You have to watch with discernment. You have to see certain things. And there's certain stuff you just shouldn't watch. Remember the distinction, Piper's distinction of regardless of whether these people are married or not, this is still skin. It's real skin. And it's still going to turn you on to one degree or another. These are fake, you know, explosions, fake blood, all this other stuff. Cursing you know, kind of think falls somewhere in the middle. I don't have a problem with it. Some people do. But my mouth is, you know, far different than it was 20 years ago. Romans 6, since we have been united with him in his death, we also to be raised to him, this is verse 5, with his uh, raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that we might lose it. Sin might lose its power in our lives. Listen to that. We are no longer slaves to sin. You're not a slave anymore when you're free in Christ. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. You don't have to see these things. If somebody makes fun of you, you say, Jesus is better because he is. Oh, you missed out. Well, oh well. We miss out on all sorts of stuff. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we no longer we know we will also live with him. So you've died, you've been buried in baptism and raised to newness of life. That's the figure that's the figurative what's happened in your heart through faith in Christ alone, not your works, not your deeds, not the money you give, not 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 watching shows or watching this or doing that or not saying curse words or whatever. No. Rather through faith in the faithful one, the one who takes away sin. Okay? The one who takes away sin. I'll put the reviews in the description. One thing that we often think about, what is God's will for me? What is God's will? What is it? Scripture says God's will for you is your sanctification. Your sanctification. This isn't sanctifying. Maybe some people have less problem. Men especially, but ladies too, know what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. Don't just blindly go around and consuming media and content. We just do that so easily with our phones. Swipe, 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 right? Scroll, scroll, scroll. Be against the world for the world. Be contramundo pro mundo. That's why I do this channel, to help you at least see this, look at something from a different angle. If you found this helpful, uh, go ahead and like and drop a comment. Uh, tell me if you've seen the movie. Uh, if you disagree, that's okay. Uh, I'd like to have some discussion. Maybe I missed something. Um, but it always generates good, good discussion. So until next time, we'll see you on Wednesday. Wednesday. Do these shows on Wednesday and Friday. So take care.